The source of electrical activity in heart is a network of specialized cardiac muscle fibers that we refer to them as autorhythmic fibers. What makes these cardiac muscle fibers special is that they are self-excitable. What does it mean? Recall when we learn about skeletal muscles, those muscles that are attached to our bones, for example, the ones that we use to move. We need nerves to send signal toward these skeletal muscle cells. Then skeletal muscle cells will be stimulated. They generate electrical impulse, which we refer to that as action potential. Then the action potential should travel through the cell membrane of the skeletal muscle cells and eventually skeletal muscle cells contract. So in short, we need nerves to stimulate the skeletal muscle cells. However, that's not the case when we talk about the autorhythmic fibers that we have in the heart. These cardiac muscle cells that we refer to them as autorhythmic fibers form just about 1% of all the cardiac muscle cells that we have. And what they do repeatedly on their own they generate electrical impulse action potential and the action potential that they generate triggers heart contraction. So it simply means to stimulate a heart to beat the autorhythmic fibers, those specialized cardiac muscle cells that I'm going to talk about in this video are the ones that establish the rhythm of the heart contraction. That's why surgeons do not need to reattach heart nerves during the heart transplant operation. The surgeons just connect the major blood vessels that I'm pointing out some of them here, for example, the vena cava, pulmonary trunk, aorta and such. And because of those autorhythmic fibers that we have in the heart, the new heart, the transplanted heart, start generating electrical impulse and heart starts beating. Please keep in mind that it takes several months for regeneration of the nerves to happen, but due to the presence of those autorhythmic fibers, heart can actually start beating and flow of blood through the chambers and also out of the chambers is going to happen. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the major autorhythmic fibers that we have in the heart. And we keep this in mind that they are the natural pacemakers of the heart. Basically, they set the rhythm of the heartbeats and also they create a pathway for electrical impulse to travel through different sections of the heart. And what they do, they also make sure that the chambers of the heart have a coordinated contraction. What does it mean? When atria contract, please keep in mind, their goal is to push extra blood into the ventricles. During that period of time that atrial walls contract, ventricles must stay completely relaxed to receive blood. It means that during atrial contraction, ventricles should stay relaxed. When the time comes for ventricles to contract and push blood into pulmonary trunk and aorta, that's the moment that atria must stay relaxed. So in short, atria and ventricles never should contract simultaneously. And that exactly is what autorhythmic fibers do. They ensure when atria contract, ventricles stay relaxed and also they ensure that when ventricles contract, atria stay relaxed. Out of the autorhythmic fibers that I'm going to explain, the one that generates more numbers of electrical impulses in one minute would be a group of autorhythmic fibers that we refer to this group as sinoatrial node. And when we're looking for sinoatrial node, we have to go to the right atrium exactly below and lateral to the opening of superior vena cava, in the lateral wall of the right atrium, we locate sinoatrial node. As I mentioned, sinoatrial node generate the most number of electrical impulses in one minute. In every 0.6 seconds, generate an action potential, which when we do the math, we see that that results in 100 times of generating electrical impulse in one minute. The rest of the autorhythmic fibers that I walk you through them, they are also self-excitable. They can on their own generate electrical impulse. But the pace that sinoatrial node generate electrical impulse is much faster than the others. It simply means that electricity from sinoatrial node reaches the other ones so quickly 
that before they get a chance on their own to generate electrical impulse, they are stimulated by the electrical impulse that they receive from sinoatrial node, so they follow the rhythm that sinoatrial node generate. That's why we refer to the sinoatrial node, or in short, SA node, as the natural pacemaker. And please pay attention to the location of SA node, simply because in those individuals that they have irregularity in their heartbeat, their heartbeat is too slow or too fast, we need treatment plans for some of these patients. We need an artificial pacemaker, which the actual pacemaker is placed under the skin below the bone clavicle, but we have one or two wires that they must pass through superior vena cava, get close to especially sinoatrial node, and in some cases, some other part of the conducting system of the heart. So that's the importance of knowing how close SA node is to the opening of superior vena cava and why we use superior vena cava to reach SA node. So SA node set the rhythm for the heartbeat that we have in every minute and from SA node electricity will be sent toward the interatrial septum the septum that we have between the two atria in interatrial septum we have lots of gap junctions the gap junctions that we have in intercalated discs between the cardiac muscle cells so electricity within milliseconds through those gap junctions that we have in interatrial septum will be transferred to the left atrium. When we're speaking about milliseconds, that simply means both atria are stimulated by the action potentials that SA node generate and both of them contract simultaneously. And please keep in mind, as I mentioned, when atria contract, ventricles must stay relaxed. But we know the fact that electricity can travel within milliseconds. Now we have to explain what doesn't let ventricles contract when atria are contracting. So from SA node, we send electricity toward the interatrial septum. The next group of autorhythmic fibers would be in interatrial septum, just in front of the opening of coronary sinus. So that's the opening of coronary sinus. When I walk anteriorly, I find the next group of autorhythmic fibers, we call this group atrioventricular node, or in short, AV node. The structure of the cells that we have in AV node would be different than the cells that we have in SA node, and that difference in the structure allows the cells to create a delay in letting electricity to pass through, and that delay gives enough time to the atria to empty their blood into the ventricles. It's like creating a pause and not letting electricity to reach to the ventricles. When atria are done emptying their blood into the ventricles, then from atrioventricular node, electricity travel through one path, which that's the only path, the only road for electricity to travel from atria to the ventricles. We name that one path atrioventricular bundle or bundle of his. Bundle of his is the only path for electricity to travel from atria to the ventricles simply because the rest of the heart would be electrically insulated by the fibroskeleton. Now, when we get to interventricular septum, then we have two pathways. Both of these pathways send electricity down through the septum toward the apex. We call those two pathways bundle branches. So they let electricity very quickly get to the apex of the heart. And then from apex of the heart, we rely on another group of other rhythmic fibers that we refer to them as subendocardial conducting network or Purkinje fibers. Purkinje fibers transmit electrical impulse upward to the entire wall of ventricles. Now that the entire ventricular walls received electricity is excited, contraction of the ventricles is going to happen. And please keep in mind, when ventricles are contracting, atria are relaxed. So in short, the one that we can say is the boss set the rhythm of 
the heartbeat would be the sinoatrial node, which is in the wall of right atrium. Electricity from SA node travels to the left atrium because of the presence of gap junctions that we have in interatrial septum. AV node, which is sitting in interatrial septum in front of the opening of coronary sinus, create the delay that we need in sending electricity to the rest of the conducting system. When the time comes, which is after atria are done contracting, bundle of his lets electricity to travel from atria to ventricles. And then in the interventricular septum, we rely on bundled branches to send electricity to the apex of the heart. And then we depend on Purkinje fibers to send electricity up to the entire ventricular walls. So these are five important groups of the conducting system. Even when the heart is removed from the body because of the activity of the autorhythmic fibers, heart can still continue beating. That shows how independent heart could be from nervous system. However, the neurotransmitters that are released from autonomic nerves can actually change the pace that these autorhythmic fibers generate action potential. For example, the neurotransmitter norepinephrine that is released from cardiac accelerator nerves, the sympathetic nerves, speed up generation of electricity in the nodes, especially the SA node and to some extent in AV node. So heart rate increases, let's say when you're exercising. However, acetylcholine, which is the neurotransmitter released from vagus nerves, parasympathetic nerves, slow down the pace of generating electrical impulse in the nodes and as a result heart rate goes down. Also we have some hormones such as epinephrine and norepinephrine, both are released from adrenal glands, that they can modify the pace of generating electrical impulse in the autorhythmic fibers. So uh, in short, the autorhythmic fibers on their own are the reasons for the rhythm that the heart has, however, the autonomic nervous system and some of the hormones such as epinephrine can modify the rhythm. I hope you find this helpful.